This is Twit. I know why, after he started talking about the iPads, I realized why they led with the MacBooks. If if you, if you did the, the Macintosh <laughs> after the iPads, it would have been very depressing. <laughs> because really, all the speed, all the power, all the focus is clearly headed towards uh, iPad. Uh, iPad Pros are much faster. I think they're probably faster than the MacBook Airs at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, they did say that it's it's has a faster um, uh, faster graphic speed than like ninety two percent of all computers. Or they something said like that. Oh, they said more than once. They said at least twice that the iPad Pros are are faster than ninety two percent of the laptops sold this year. Ninety two yeah, percent. Well, well, I don't know if that's by volume. By no, I don't know what that is, but or by price. All, port all portable PCs. Yeah, but that, remember that these things go way, way down. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. like a yeah. It's, However, it's, we have it's, seen it's benchmarks on the iPhone XS that say it's faster than a MacBook in many cases. Uh, so uh, I think this is I'm, I came away with a very strong feeling that this is the beginning of the end of Intel uh, for Matt, for Apple. That really that's what that's what this whole announcement presaged for me is the beginning of, of the end for Intel. I don't think I, I don't think I agree. I, I could definitely see them uh, putting the, uh, putting their own arm processors in consumer grade machines. Like there'll be a level of MacBook air. There'll be a level of Mac mini. There'll be a level of iMac that, uh, that has their, that has their own custom chips in it. Uh, I don't know if Apple can produce the sort of chips that have the performance of the highest performance Intel chips. Yeah. Um, I don't know when that's going to happen. I, I've, uh, that's why I find it difficult to believe that they will ever do a complete turnover of their chip line. I guess, but it definitely has some advantages to have an ARM chip somewhere in a Mac, somewhere in the product line. Well, they start off talking about the uh, A12X Bionic, which is even better than the A12 Bionic in the new <laughs> iPhones. Uh, this is a chip uh, with the 7 nanometer process. Uh, the first, you know, mass production seven nanometer chip. I think they're getting these from TSMC. Uh, and I have to point out, Intel hasn't even gotten to 10 nanometers yet. Um, uh, yeah, admittedly, uh, I don't think you're going to see a, a 265 watt Xeon class processor in an iPad at any point. Uh, and I know you're not. No mobile device would ha have anything like that. But I do feel like they're they're really positioning these as beasts in uh, in terms of performance. Let's start though with the form factor because that's a big change and much is expected. Um, they did. There's two ways you can uh, take advantage of these narrower narrower bezels. You can get more screen on a device of the same size. That's what they're doing with the 11 inch iPad Pro, or the same screen on a smaller size, and that's what they did with the 12.9. It's got the same screen size and resolution as the old iPad Pro 12.9, but on a form factor, they say about the size of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And I have to say, I bought a 12.9 when it first came out, and it did feel a little big for me. I actually ended up giving that to an employee because it just... It, but, but if you can get it down to the size of a piece of paper, that might not be... That might be pretty usable. And, and I have... Not, it's not just... It's not just the, that's the size of a piece of paper. The fact that they've removed all that glass and all that aluminum, it feels so light. Oh, you in felt the hand. it. Yeah. Tell us yeah, about yeah. it. I mean, it, it, it almost, it really almost felt like a, a prop. It felt like a hollow shell of plastic compared to uh, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro that I've had for the past two or three years. Uh, the hard edges are a big win. For, for some reason, it just feels like it kind of sits in your hands a little bit better. Uh, it, I had to remind myself this was still a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, for for all that 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 bent, uh, I think a lot of people once they pick it up, they're going to say, "I would much rather have I would much rather have the same size screen and a much lighter device uh, than anything that I've been using for the past couple of years." Uh, how did the screen look? It's not OLED; it's Retina, uh, the same liquid Retina Apple's been touting on the iPhone XR. Yeah, you know, it it, it, look, it looks great to me. I can I couldn't really see any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, super super dense, uh, really good blacks, really good contrast. Uh, no blowouts in any of the colors and reds. I was kind of trying to find a way to make it make it cry a little bit, but nope, it looked perfectly fine to me. 
the rounded, uh, I like the rounded corners. Those are pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah tell us about that. Play. So it's squared out. Yeah, that's okay. So rounded corners on the screen, which is odd. If you look at previous yeah. iPads, the screen is clearly square. Uh, they've, they've, I, is, they're just masking them off, though, right? It's got to be a square screen. Uh, no, I, I think that they actually have shaped the display to have <laughs> wow. rounded corners. Uh, the, but uh, the, why, uh, why, what the, is the advantage of rounded corners on a screen? Uh, Aesthetics. Cool. Besides cutting <laughs> off content, but is the advantage, right? Cutting like, off that like last off letter on the page, what is the advantage? None. It's aesthetics. Oh, yeah. I, I it's just looks. Just looks. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. That, but when it looks yeah. this good. Hey, Steve likes rounded corners. We're going to keep doing rounded corners. Yeah. Let me just say, as we're, since we're talking about it, I love this. I love <laughs> those rounded corners flat. I like that. I love the form factor that's on the iPhone 5S or, uh, yeah, 5S or, fi sorry, the iPhone SE. It's also the 5 and the 5S. I like it. And so the fact that Apple is doing this with the design of the iPad, I am on board with it big yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, we've we've seen them on the uh, iPhone, so it, mm -hmm. it only makes sense. And then the yeah. they took the the uh, the aluminum body, and they've and now it's squared off. It's not rounded anymore. How did that feel, Andy? Uh, it feels great. I don't know. I don't know why, but the fact that you have this corner nestling into your hand instead of having this rounded off uh, edge to it uh, feels really, really good aesthetically. Just as a device on the table, the fact that it doesn't have this fake this curve that trying to is trying to trick into thinking that it's a lot thinner than it actually is. Uh, it's just, it just feels like a more substantial thing without making it any heavier whatsoever. Uh, the only thing that's kind of weird is that, uh, I, as far as I know, they didn't make any radical changes to the camera, but to, to make it that thin and to keep with that design, they did have to have a camera. Bump There's a bump. A yeah. Little bit. Yeah. There is a bump. Uh, you don't really notice it, but it's, it's an, it was an interesting choice. Uh, the, uh, the the pogo pins for the uh, keyboard are in a different place now. Uh, they're they're now like uh, kind of like attached to the back of it. The uh, there's a little like magnetic cue. There's a magnet on the side of it, so you can actually see where the new pencil clips into, uh, and the pencil snaps onto that really really tightly, so it doesn't feel like it's going to fall off anytime. Uh, but I'm, I'm, overall, just as a shape, I just really, really liked it a lot. Not just for those, not just for the the weight of it, but just the way that it sits on a desk, the way that you sort it sort of uh, sits in your hand. Uh, and the new pencil is ten times <laughs> worth, uh, worth of fabulous, in terms, or at least for the twenty minutes that I was playing with it. So in the video, um, the, it, you know, we're reading tea leaves here. Uh, so I want I want to get your uh, your input uh, in the video as you can see here on the edge on the bottom edge there's something that looks like I don't know what an SD card slot that's no, not that's, the, a, that's a magnet that's, that's a magnet and is that the top so that's the magnet for the pencil is that what that is right yeah, yeah the, the pencil okay. the pencil not only does it not only does it click in there but it will also uh, do wireless charging uh, once once it's magnetized in there uh, it's really it's really cool once you once you click it on top there. Uh, it actually, from that edge of the screen, a little indicator sort of drops down, saying Apple Pencil battery le battery level sixty two percent or whatever, and then silently rolls back up again. Yeah, uh, I li I really like that. I, I don't never I never thought it was aesthetically pleasing to stick the pencil into the lightning port. Uh, it. Yeah, it was such a bad idea. Yeah, it was such a bad idea. Yeah. It, was, it looked like it was going to break instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some people had accidentally broken oh, it off. Of There's no way that wouldn't have. It also means we've eliminated the easily lost cap to protect the lightning connector. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness. Everything, everything about it is just, and even if all they if all they did to update this pencil was, number one, uh, get rid of that cap. Number two, flatten one side of it so that it no longer rolls off the table. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is another thing that that it does, uh, and also it's no longer glossy. It's uh, it has a sort of like a satiny, not, I wouldn't say rough, but it's not a glossy sort of feel to it. Uh, and and just say nothing the fact that now it is the size of a pencil. It isn't this weird, super long shape that you can't stick in any uh, pen holder that's inside your laptop bag without sticking out like an aerial antenna. Yeah, uh, just all these things <laughs> feel so good in the hand, uh, and the the fact that you now have a tappable area on it. Uh, will just make it so much more fun, to, so much more more easy to use. How do you like the uh, screen of the uh, the iPad? Yeah, uh, absolutely solid. I really couldn't see any difference between uh, this screen and 
uh, the screen that I've been using for the past couple of years. Uh, it's, uh, I think that I, I don't know what you're, what you'd have to do to make a panel like that look bad. It certainly looked perfectly fine to me. Yeah. And, uh, the lack of bezels, did that feel, make it feel like it was all screen? It's not quite all screen. There's still, no, I think, yeah, you know what, that's, uh, I was going to, I was going to bring that up when you were talking about the Huawei device. I think that there, you need to have a little bit of bezel there because, uh, not only are you going to be holding it, but at some point you have to sort of reach over and pick it up Right. and giving you sort of a, a visible safe zone, uh, is just reassuring and it just makes absolute sense. I agree. Uh, and how much, the, do, and the, and the, how much is the bezel? Like, what is that? How much is it like a half an inch or three quarters of an quarter, inch? Quarter inch? Uh, I would say about half. I would say about a half an inch, a little bit less mm. than that. That's not, not thought, a quarter yeah. inch, but yeah. So uh, then the bottom doesn't have pogo pins anymore. This is, it looks like a microphone. Right. It's got, a, a, I presume, a Ray mics for Siri. So you said the pogo pins are on the back now. Right. It's on the back surface on the bottom. The smart connector. Four pins. Yeah, the yeah. smart connector for the right. keyboard. Well, we're going to have to redesign those anyway for a different form factor, but now you know you'll have to absolutely have to have a... Uh, Right. A different. I got, it, it really does. Uh, I I had no complaints ever about having a home button on my iPad Pro, but now that uh, but I think even more than uh, on the new iPhones, taking it off of the iPad just seems like such a brutally honest and simple and natural thing to happen, because now you just have nothing but screen. You have nothing but user interface. You have nothing but content, uh, and it looks pretty nice. They're doing, uh, of course. The True Tone, as they did before with the iPad Pros, and True Motion, 120 frame per second. In fact, they showed Assassin's Creed Rebellion uh, with 120 frame per second. Not all games will do that, but that one did. And they had to have a little bezel because they've got a Face ID camera, and it's in the. Is this in the portrait edge? The the short edge of it. Uh, it would be. What it's the opposite so. side of the USB C port, I believe. Okay. So if you want to call that the top, but it will work in <laughs> multiple orientations. Yeah, what is the top? And that's that's what's yeah, cool that's, is they, they had said with the iPhone, oh, we can't do uh, you know, vertic vertical orientation or horizontal orientation. Now they can. Now it doesn't matter how you hold the iPad in every yeah, orientation. Yeah, did anybody tell you how they were able to make that work in iPad Pro versus why they couldn't make that work in iPhone? Nope. It's yeah. the you know, by I can't, I can't bionic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Did you I try can't it? wait to did find you, out the did details. Did you try it, Andy? Did you try it from all the different orientations? Uh, I did not try face unlock, and they weren't offering to have uh, yeah. someone who had been trained for it uh, to yeah. do it. So I'm sure I'm sure we'll it works. Wait. But yeah. <laughs> But it, uh, yeah, but it, it, uh, it seems to work pretty, pretty okay the way that, the way that it goes. I was actually a little intrigued that the iPad Pro had Face ID, but the MacBook Air did not. Uh, they, cause they, you know, there's, there's the same thing where like, oh, the bezel gets really small, and you're thinking, oh, is there room up there for a camera? And then, yes, there is. They've got the Face FaceTime camera on the MacBook Air, but uh, clearly, again, Face ID not the thing they're necessarily going for everywhere. Yeah, they added right. touch well, ID. If you just figure. if you're adding Face ID, then you're you're charging another hundred dollars for the for the MacBook Air, which people are already complaining about the price. So I'm sure that had something to do with why they decided not to do that Very technology. Likely. Although the iPad Pro, again, the price there is actually pretty cheap. I mean, those the you know I was expecting those to be more expensive than they ended up. So I because wonder, this I is wonder. the future of Apple, I'm going to say it again. This is <laughs> charge more. <laughs> this is the, well, I'm just seven ninety nine for the eleven inch, uh, based on sixty four gigs of storage. By the way, no more thirty two gigs. SKU, yeah. thank God. Uh, Twelve point nine inch will start at nine ninety nine, and of course, if you decide you want to get uh, more storage, you can. Silver and space gray. The storage uh, choices range from sixty four gigs all the way up to a terabyte. <laughs> uh, again, I you know we're getting more and more PC like on these things. These really you know they say faster than most laptops. You've got a lot of storage. Uh, you've even got, the way Apple put them designed the page, even the way Apple designed the page that you're looking at is more similar to the way purchasing a MacBook or a yeah. MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air looked. Yeah. I, as soon as I clicked on that page, I almost for half a second thought. Did I accidentally click on one of the MacBook pages? Because yeah. even the way they designed the page looks different. Wi-Fi plus cellular, a premium of $150 now for a cellular. It used to be $129. Uh, 
Um, and then uh, Apple Care, of course, you always you always want to get that. What's in the box? A Type C charging cable. They show one end. I presume the other end. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's no power adapter in the box. No, there's you yeah. get a 18 watt USB C power adapter. Oh, there it so, is. It would probably be a USB C to USB C. 18 like watt USB C uh, to USB C. There yeah. you go. And and big big bonus. This is one of the coolest things you can do with USB C. You can actually use the iPad to charge your phone. So it's got this big wampin battery in it. When you plug in a, de a rechargeable device <laughs> that knows how to do that with USB C, uh, two-way charging. Asked, Love that. Yeah. So yeah, it's like you're you're already you're carrying this huge battery charger anyway. <laughs> yeah, might so as well. why not move? Why not move some of those electrons where they can be? They can actually make you some money. Did you ask if you could use a USB-C for a monitor or for an eGPU or other devices? What can that USB-C port do? Um, it can be used for a monitor. I didn't ask for eGPU. I don't. I would guess no. I actually didn't even bother asking. Yeah, I bet not because that seems weird. That's, that's for uh, Intel. I don't yeah. think be support for that. But they did. Yeah. But they did say that uh, you can use it for an external monitor. It's a actually. It's <laughs> weird that uh, I had. You, you got to give Apple a little bit of credit, given that uh, now you can just have a a, a simple cable. That connects your uh, your camera, for instance, to your iPad, uh, iPad Pro. They've made the first dongleless device that that's in the lineup for the past like ten years. You can't leave the house without a dongle if you've got a MacBook, but if you've got an iPad, if you just got a camera cable, if you just got a cable with a, with the connectors at both ends, you're good. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, array three array microphones, speakers in all four uh, corners, and they said tweeter and woofer in all yeah. four corners. Uh, did you hear? Did you try the sound? Is it noticeably different? That was really, really. It was really, really it was loud, loud in that yeah. spot, uh, yeah. and also it was like reverberation. So yeah. I did, I did play something, but I really didn't notice you can't, one way or another. You can't tell. So, so my question is: with the external monitor, is what happens? Is it just mirroring, or do do the app somehow get to control what the external display is used for? Obviously, you I'm, can't I'm just a, touch the monitor. I would assume that it would work exactly the same way as when you've got like an external VGA or HDMI connector on an existing iPad. Uh, there's some apps that will treat it at like a, a Keynote treats that as a separate uh, separate display okay. with the user interface on the regular panel. Uh, I think there are video editors that will use that for playback. Uh, there are different solutions for it. Do note, though, that Duet and other external monitor solutions with the iPads stopped working. Uh, fairly recently. I wonder if there'll be a Duet-like capability which would allow me to use my iPad as a second display for a MacBook. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. Mm. It would need some sort of Apple uh, Mac <laughs> You hook it up to your USB-C, what happens? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with USB-C. You never know. <laughs> well, maybe, well, maybe, well, maybe it would sync yeah. <laughs> through iTunes. Yeah, uh, who knows? Who knows? Oh, but, no, that, yeah, won't, but, that but, definitely but, won't work. No. <laughs> It would, it would be super wonderful if you could, if you could plug this iPad in and use it as, the, as an external display. It would be doubly cool if uh, there was an API so that Adobe could basically project, extend the user, in, a, a touch user, a touch interface for right. Photoshop to mix, mix and blend colors or even just use it as a Wacom tablet uh, with the Apple Pencil. Were you blown uh, away by that Photoshop demo? Man, the way that she was scrolling through layers, then the uh, augmented reality with Arrow. Uh, that's another you know, measure of how much desktop power this has. Yeah, and especially they, uh, they had uh, 2K Sports doing a demo of uh, the NBA NBA uh, 2K game where it's, it's like you see an arena full of people and they're not just, it's not just a painting of people in mid-clap. There are people who are actually standing up and cheering. Every fan different, they said. <laughs> every, every, or most of them. And, as, and not only the, the are these like story. really, they're, 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 they're almost, they're, they're, these players are almost outside of the uncanny value. They're just like climbing their way up out of it because they're, <laughs> they're so close to being realistic. But none, but nonetheless, to give them more credit, like you look at the, you look at the, the texture of the wood on the, on, on the basketball court. Where it's it's shiny like it's like a varnished wood, but it also has that sort of texture uh, of like a gameplay surface on it, and so and this is all being driven from a an iPad, uh, and this is this is me just simply repeating a marketing thing that the marketing person during this marketing event said uh, during the demo, <laughs> but he said that these are this is performance that we were unable to get on any other mobile platform. Uh, this is truly console level performance. And I will simply say, looking at it in front of me, I absolutely believed it. Yeah. 
Yeah, they compared it I to an Xbox One. I think they actually sent, yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but, you know, it's interesting because Apple and the iPhone particularly but uh, has, has really become the king of casual gaming. But this is taking on the king of hardcore gaming. And uh, I think it might be, I mean, they've got the power. They've got the screen. Although as, uh, as, as was discussed in our uh, community was that it's still no controller. You know, you're still on well, you a screen. You can use one, screen. can't you? So, you could use well, a controller. Well, that's, that's the question, a USB-C controller. Will that, will that oh, work? Oh, well, there are yeah. made for, there are my f made for iPhone Few. There, Bluetooth controllers. There are. Yeah. Bluetooth is, isn't quite as, it, there's the late. issue of lag. The latency might actually <laughs> be an effect. Though there are some fantastic quality USB, or sorry, um, uh, Bluetooth um, gaming pads that, that are game gamer level so you know there's a there's a possibility yeah. i i would argue though i and i hope that the gamers out there don't hate me for this i don't think this is ever gonna i don't think the ipad will ever be a gamer a gamer device I, it just it's a it's not de a dedicated gaming device it's an ipad oh, it's come a on. tablet it that competes, comes with, a lot it of competes other stuff. with the switch at this point right which would you rather I, play fortnite it, on it competes, but I don't see a lot of game developers spending the time necessary to turn their, you know, their t top tier games into gaming. Fortnite into makes a million dollars a day on iPhone and iPad. Yeah, I there, think there's there some are, incentive. And and and, um, and uh, uh, um, Minecraft is an, another huge um, money making game, but these are. <clears throat> These aren't. We're not talking about Red Dead Redemption Two here. That I right. don't think game companies are going to spend a lot of time porting these these really big, really advanced games onto the iPad, and therefore I don't think the iPad is ever going to really make a name as being a gaming console. It'll be it'll be an iPad. It already is a tablet that you can do amazing gaming on, but it will never become a replacement for your Xbox or your PlayStation or something like that. I really don't think that's the case. Yeah, I think I think you, that's a great point because it, 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 it was an impressive demo just showing exactly how quickly this machine could render this, these graphics and put them on the screen uh, and do them do so interactively. The question is, uh, the people who really, really want that level of performance, do they want to do it on a machine that they hold up like this and do like that with? Or do they want that to be on their big 4K display in the middle of the living room? Uh, do they want to be able to do it with their friends uh, in the room? Uh, or they want to be able to do it with network connectivity as opposed to just sitting on the subway with their iPad Pro uh, working with it that way? But uh, the level of performance that it was at least demonstrating in all of this uh, between the Photoshop demo and the, and the game demo – was it's just nothing like what you're getting for the same amount of money or even more money uh, in the Windows tablet space. I think it might surprise you. <laughs> I would not. I would be the last person to bet against uh, AAA gaming on an iPad. Uh, but we'll see. Okay. You know, you, I mean, you're right, Lori. If the developers don't do it, uh, then it's not going to happen. But I, I don't. I think the form factor uh, objections are can be overcome. It's mobile. I mean, it's portable. The, the DS sells quite well. Um, sure does. Yeah. Um, but, but it is a it is a bespoke device. It's designed specifically to be no copy. You get the controllers built into it, and it's a really cool form. That's factor. the. I think the controllers are going to be the the thing, and that Type C port is inc incredibly capable and much more capable than the uh, Lightning port. Much more universal than a Lightning port. I can see no reason why you wouldn't see Type C based controllers. It's, it's going to be it's going to be so cool to see what kind of hardware comes out when people don't have to kowtow to license this special proprietary connector yes. from Apple, and yes. they can just simply buy, create a USB device, a USB C device uh, that will just fit into that plug. I'm you you just, already brought up you could here. you could connect it right to your uh, your camera. Uh, although I, I don't see a lot of cameras with Type C yet, but I imagine they'll all have Type C down the road. Well, but but you get a you get a t matter of fact in my bag right now. I've got a Type C to micro USB. That's true. Uh, connector right. so that right. I can hook this up to my uh, to my camera. Right. So it's it's just cool to be have uh, and uh, it, it's just really cool to have one cable. Not I have to plug it into an adapter, plug the adapter into this because sooner or later that adapter is going to go missing. But I have less likelihood of losing that one cable that I need. Uh, I thought it was interesting that they've, it sounds like they've put a pretty good camera 
itself into this. They're mentioning smart HDR. Uh, I it's f 1.8. I don't know if this is the same as the iPhone 10s wide angle, but it sure seems pretty close. And wasn't the neural engine part of the way they got HDR, the, smart HDR? Yeah, and they have a yeah, quite so, a hefty neural right. engine in the Bionic uh, A12X. It, you could tell the the picture. It was a big neural engine. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was bigger than the CPU. It looked like in the in the the, the uh, cross section. 4K video recording at 60 frames a second. They've uh, slow-mo support for 1080p at uh, 120 frames, 720p at 240 frames. Uh, video, uh, cinematic video stabilization. I don't know what that means. That sounds like it's software-based. Autofocus video. I do, do you know, Andy, is this the same camera as in the iPhone? Um, I was told that it wasn't a big uh, improvement over that it was substantially the same as what Apple has put into other into current iPhones. Uh, when I was I was mostly talking about why do you ha why is there that camera bump now? Is it because you've done something so that's substantially different? Is there something right. a, a next generation anything? And I was told that no, it was an acknowledge. It was basically how they could get what they needed to do to get the camera that they were going to put in any way into that form factor. It looks just like so, the camera uh, bump on my iPhone. <laughs> but big. It, it, it's, it's, it's a big wart. Yeah. Well, I'm so it, it is. This I'm is afraid, a 10R. Really it looks worked. the same on that 10R. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the only drawback is that you, I guess you can't lie your iPad down flat anymore. Well, yeah. I don't know if that's a problem, though. I mean, how many times do you have the... How, yeah. I can't think of a time where I had the thing flat on a table... And was actually interacting with it, as opposed to it's there because I put it down and I'm going to pick it up later.